So what I'm trying to do here is uh, you can get these cheap encoders off uh, AliExpress or eBay or wherever. They're meant for CNC machines and they're basically uh, AB, you know, not classic AB enclosure where you've got two, I could probably, wait, if I put this here, if you look on the oscilloscope, trigger and move it like this. But depending on which way I turn it, it's how in, how these uh, incremental encoders work. The pulses say the blue one is B and the yellow one is A. The pulse is either behind or ahead. And it's the way you can detect rotation. Uh, quite often this is just used. Uh, this is interfaced with microcontrollers, which is like a really good solution. But um, I quite want to build something that doesn't rely on microcontrollers. It's been a bit more old fashioned uh, using DIP parts. So I went on, I managed to find this article on uh, Stack Overflow. Well, Electrical engineering stack overflow, <clears throat> uh, discussing ways of doing this. I guess it's for digital logic with FPGAs. Uh, it's quite in depth. I haven't read all of it, but I found this great post that's a lot more practical down here, which just gives. Um, lots of ways of doing it with logic, different logic gates and I went with this one and they have a link to a simulation um, where you introduce delays using logic gates. Now I didn't realise at the time that this is an incredibly small delay for my encoder because if you look uh, when I turn it it's about wait what's don't know what the divisions are on this scope uh, oh yeah here sorry so like a pulse is like I don't know oh it doesn't tell you in how much an X ah uh, twenty four to four so it's about 20 milliseconds so like if you think five, five 50 nanoseconds is minuscule in comparison um so i did try using logic gates uh just uh buffers logic buffers uh, as a way of delaying um delaying the signal so we can get so basically how it works is you it's, it's a little bit clearer on the schematic is you create a delay so you can get a pulse every time it rises or falls uh, the uh, this square here one of these um, so I tried this and and um, the CMOS the 400 series logic is just it's just way too fast for it because I'm not doing FPGAs I'm doing discrete gates so I realized I could just use RC filters don't even need to use any logic for it so uh oops delete these i just used um a simple rc filter into one of the sides of the xor gates and if you look here this is for the b side this white probe here is the white one straight from the encoder which is b i think and if I move this orange one, that will be on the output of the XOR. I can get these little pulses, you see. And you see how I have a pulse for the rise and fall of each edge. Even with these RC filters, RC um, 
RC delays, resistor capacitor delays, um, it's still quite small results, still quite small um, little triggers. And you can see that way more than I need. Look, you can just spin this really fast. I'm never going to hit below that. So that's where I am. Uh, so I've done this part, and I just need to do find an and, an OR gate. The problem is, is I don't have an OR gate. So I'm going to have to use a a NOR gate. So all I need is a 4001. Okay, I'm just going to pause the video. Oh, I can't pause the video. Hello. You just come to sit and wait. back in a minute. So what I need is an OR gate but I don't have one. So the next best thing is I could use a NOR gate and then just use an extra gate as a buffer. So like this. Not buffer and inverter. So, ah. I just need to find it. Five one. Go. That's another camera. Here's the four oh oh one. Just need to put it in the breadboard. Turn off pass mode. Terrible data sheet. Fourteen. BDD.
seven is VSS. Then we want A to be A is pin two, one to be the output of this, which is here. Other one which is the output of this XOR should go into there. And if we look at that output there, that orange, this orange wire is yellow trace at the top there. and the white one will be the thing there. Power it. Whoop. There you go. Now we've got hmm. is that right? Apparently this is huh. then we need to do this section here, which is the XOR between the delayed B and A. So we do that. So delayed B. Now I don't know if this might cause problems because I have to drive two gate inputs, but I think it should be all right. Um, so B delay is on nine, I think. So that's oh, there's ton of power. B delay is nine. We want it to go to um, one or two. So B delay seven eight nine. No, no nine's the output. No ten's the output. Nine. Oh, it's where the RC is, isn't it? So that's B delay. And then. Other one. Should be coming from the non delayed input, so that's here of A. Red Bull's not playing. There you go. Now we'll keep this is going to go probe there, but I'll take this. And it should be pin three. Pin three, yeah, to there. And that's what will feed the, this uh, flip flop. Oh, oh, it has to be powered. Huh. Interesting. So when you go forwards, 
How do you put this onto A? So when you go forwards, so when I turn this like that, I have a rising edge and then I get a little drop. X or of that and that. Okay. I don't understand that. I can understand this stuff easily. Oh, I didn't do the. So I've got to join the pins of five. Let's turn that off again. Join the pins of five and six of the or no, uh, no. one, two, three, four, five and six of the nor. And then I take the output of three and put it into the, the input of five and six. Uh, then, why do we want it the other way around? Should, oh, did I do that live? Nope. I should get this. Stick it here. What? It's not right. Why am I not getting that? Is something touching? Yes, something's touching. Yeah, that's it. These two wires here were touching. Problem with using uninsulated wires must mean that now, if I look at the output of this, oh, yeah, that's what I was looking at. Wait, if I put this back here, I'm running out of space. No, that is right, that is right. I need to understand it though. Anyway, this should be little spikes here. So, this is our outputs. We've got one, this orange wire is here. Can you see my mouse? This orange wire is here. And this white wire is these blue spikes and that should be should be that pin four. That is pin four. But the input doesn't look inversed. Oh yeah, it is. It is inverse. So we're basically just inverting it back round so it's positive spikes again. Yeah. Because we don't have... Because we don't have um, a straight ore. We're just using an ore with an inversing output and then using another ore to invert it back round again. So now we need to put it into this chip. Which is here? Nope. Just had it. So 
4013. Where are you hiding? Just looking for the 4013. Here's one. Here is CD 4013. That you can't see. It's the wrong way around. In the board, board's dirty. That's the CD four oh one three Texas Instruments. It's a flip flop D type. Simpler pin up. Not like an old photocopy like some of them. Photocopied from a data book, probably in the 80s, uh, 70s. VTD is 14. The SS is here, and it's a dual package, but we, no, I'm not quite sure what I should do with the set and reset, what does it say? I can't leave them floating, but I don't need them. I need to work that out. Um, so we're powered. We can use the left hand side. So you want D1 to be pin 5? No. Oh, yeah. Pin 5 goes for pin 3 of the 4078. Which is the top one. I might have to use an actual jumper here. So we want to go from we want to go from this pin three. Where I'm looking at the moment with the oscilloscope. And we want to go to pin five. Then the clock is to come from the one we just made, pin four, which is where the other probe is. Four into D, which is No, it's a clock, so it's pin three. Then, so we've got power. The only thing we need to work out is what we do with certain reset. This is virtual, so just ground it. Then. Wait, set. No, 
because Yeah, that wouldn't work. Yeah, because they have functions so set to opposite each other. I don't actually, I should learn more about this. Which is the one? If I'm grounding, if I'm grounding, does that mean reset needs, needs to be on five volts? FPJ I probably should just read dates uh, Okay, here you go. What's Doesn't care. The high level at the set or reset pins sets or resets the outputs, regardless of the levels of the other inputs. When set and reset are inactive. So, in theory, it was right to ground them. Oh. What I'm doing is I'm just making sure this this part here simulates the B uh, A and B outputs of this. So when I set when I put this high it's like one direction. When I do it's low it's the other direction. And the idea is the outputs we're gonna get is a direction pin and a clock pin. Now it seems a bit laggy here but that's because this is going quite slowly. Uh, what's the time divisions? I don't know. Five nanoseconds? So yeah, that should work. Let's get um, so let's push this up a bit more. Now we've got now we just need to ground the two pins two set and reset pins. Which is the data sheet again. So four and six. So four. It's not powered. Let's just connect them together. No. Didn't cross. Come on, breadboard and six. So now 
what we've got now is four this one no three is this one and that's connected to five the D pin of the flip flop four which is here is connected to pin three which is the clock input we've got set and reset grounded ground one here then we should just be able to read here so we'll put one we'll leave and we'll put this the yellow trace on the oscilloscope will go just to one of the inputs and the white one which is the blue on the oscilloscope will go to the output which is Q output which is pin 1 of the flip flop let's see if that works uh, ooh. hey see look what happens if I zoom out When I turn it clockwise, it, it goes high. When I turn it anti-clockwise, oops, it goes down. And what I've got here somewhere, where's the LED gone? I actually had an indicator, I'll make another one. I've got an LED. Can you see that little LED? One K resistor. Oop. Almost fell off my chair. And then what we do is we put it to ground through a 1K resistor and then we'll put it onto there. So it's LED. See this LED, if I turn it anti clockwise, it's off. If I turn it clockwise, it's on. Now this is useful because we now have a gate that tells us which direction it's turning in and we have a clock um, you could probably drive two encoders with these parts you would probably need two 407O's and you could reuse these because there's enough gates There's two, there's four of them. So you only one of these, two of these, and this has got two in it, so one of these. And you could do two encoders just with three chips. I mean, it seems crazy because if you use a microcontroller, all you need is one chip. But actually, there are benefits to. Oh, oh. Oh yeah, look, sometimes. Oh, I can feel it because we didn't. We slightly moved back. Oh, it trips up sometimes.
Yeah. Yeah, you can see sometimes. I had to find out what that is. Probably race. Some kind of race condition. Wait, no, that's programming. Uh, propagation delay issue. Metastability issues. Might be better if I um, increase the uh, gate size, the um, size of the RC. Now, the cool thing about this is we've now got a logic for forwards and backwards, and we've got a clock. And what we could do is feed it into a binary counter. You can count up and down. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Okay, far. Might be interesting. So, you see the. any glitches on the oscilloscope. Occasionally. Maybe, oh, it's like... It's almost like it slips backwards sometimes. It has some kind of debouncing. Or a delay somewhere. Yeah, that. It's usually going from one. Yeah. Huh. Anyway, that was the aim of this um, little stage: was to get forwards and backwards and clock. If we move because we've got the LED in indicator showing us forward and backwards. If we move to the clock, the clock should be on pin three. Might. Huh. That's not right. That might be the problem. Why does pin 3 look like the gate? Oh, come on, pin 2. Pin 3 is here. There we go. Might be some. Mm. I think it's probably here where the state isn't always completely known. Is the, is the clock set on a falling edge? I think. Also, mm, easy map. You can't really use that as a clock. They have a clock coming out, and it's really. I guess it's not. Our clock isn't so square as theirs. Look, as if we zoom out. I don't mean square as um, consistent as this. We don't want we don't want a pulse. Hmm. I guess we could just derive a pulse from the you can't see my mouse. We just derive a pulse from the rising edge of A. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my boring video.